about to see The world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get away This is what we waited for guys and welcome back to another week of what we eat for dinner so this week is the first of our plant-based eating weeks a little while ago my husband and I decided that we were going to trial a vegan stroke plant-based lifestyle for a few weeks just as something different to do during lockdown we eat a lot of meals without meat in any way um, we don't specifically go out of our way to be vegetarian but a lot of the meals we enjoy don't have meat in so I just wanted to see what it'd be like to take it that one step further and completely eliminate all dairy eggs and meat from our diet it's just for a trial it wasn't any permanent decision and obviously we've got three growing boys so we decided to leave it up to them they've really thrown themselves into this they've really given it their all they've tried everything that I've made everything we've bought they've tried and what I'm going to do is do a separate video on everything. I've kept all the packaging from everything we've used. Um, I've documented all our thoughts <laughs> and, you know, honest opinions on things. So Steve and I will sit down and do a separate video on how we found it and what we found so far. But this week's meals is completely plant-based and it was really interesting to try and create some new meals and things out of foods that we don't normally use. So without any more rambling from me, let's go and take a look at what we've eaten this week. So I'm in the middle of making dinner. So this is my butternut squash recipe, but I've changed it so that it's plant-based or vegan. And basically I've swapped out the cottage cheese and the cheddar, and I'm gonna put in a cheese sauce that I got from Tesco. It's the free from range, and it's you just mix it with coconut milk or almond milk. I've used almond milk, and I've mixed my spinach in with it. It doesn't look very appetizing at the moment. And I'm not going to mix cheddar in with this. I'm then going to put my butternut squash and another layer of the um, tomato sauce, some more pasta, some more butternut squash, some more cheese sauce, and then I'm going to top it with some vegan cheese that we also got from Tesco. So fingers crossed, first vegan lasagna I've ever made. So I've now got my roasted butternut squash on top of my cheese sauce mix. So then it's another layer of my tomato ragu, another layer of pasta, another layer of cheese sauce, another layer of butternut, then done. And so here we are out of the oven and I've just topped it with a little bit of this Tesco um, coconut alternative to mature cheddar and it smells really nice. It smells very cheesy, I'm not sure what the cheese sauce is going to be like but it does smell good. So here is mine dished up, I've got some salad with it, a little bit of iceberg lettuce, some red onion, some tomatoes and some red jalapenos and the lasagna and it looks so nice, it smells amazing and I'm really looking forward to it. So for our dinner tonight we've got leftover butternut squash lasagna, we've got some couscous salad with rocket cucumber, tomato, red onion and some jalapeno chilies. I'll put lime juice in there and what else did I put in there? Oh a little bit of brine from the chilies. We've had a barbecue at lunchtime where we had the vegan burgers and sausages which were really really good. Steve really liked the burgers, I wasn't so keen on the texture. Hobbs! But the sausages were really good. Um, and we also had some of this salad at lunchtime, and we're going to put a little bit of this Nando's vegan perinaise, which is amazing, on top of our salad, and maybe a little bit of this, which is nutritional yeast, which basically just tastes like like cheese flakes. It's really, really good. So this is what we've got for our dinner tonight. I'm just making a start on tonight's dinner, and I'm going to make some buffalo cauliflower wings. Um, I've adapted a recipe I found on, I think it's called Bosch. A lot of people have recommended them, um, their website. So I've changed it up a little bit and I've added some extra corn flour instead and I'm using the Frank's Red Hot Wing Sauce instead of making my own. And I also haven't added breadcrumbs but I'll leave that linked in the description box. Also the exact ingredients that I've used. So in here I've made a batter. I've got 100 grams of flour. It says plain flour. I've only got self-raising. Um, I've put 50 grams of corn flour just to make it a little bit more crispy. So there's two teaspoons of garlic powder, there's a teaspoon of onion powder, I put two teaspoons of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon of salt, quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper and 300 ml of unsweetened coconut milk and I've mixed it into a batter and what I'm going to do now is coat my cauliflower head, it's just like one large cauliflower head but mine were absolutely tiny so I've got two. I'm going to coat them in the batter. I was going to do them in the air fryer, but I'm not sure if they're all going to stick together. So what I might do is do the first stage in the oven. So I'm going to preheat my oven, spray it with a little bit of oil, 
lay out my cauliflower once it's been dipped in batter. I'm then going to bake that for about 20 minutes. Then you take it out and cover it in the red hot sauce and then you put it back in the oven for another sort of 20 minutes and apparently it'll go all nice and crispy. And I'm going to be serving this with some salt, pepper, like salt and pepper chilli chips, like Chinese style with the peppers, obviously the chips and onions and some of the salt and pepper chip seasoning, which I'll show you in a minute. Right, so what I'm going to do, um, I think I'm just going to put a few pieces in at once and then... Put it on my tray. I might need to get some tongs actually. So I'm just going to kind of I don't know, just coat, coat the collie. And then I'm gonna I was gonna do it in the air fryer but I didn't. And then just put each piece on the baking tray I guess. Let's try using the sausage spoon on. We might be here for years. I'm dramatic, probably not years. But I did think that with that, I think using the uh, tongs was not going to be very time effective. Use both. Hey, how am I going to use both? One in each hand. Yeah, multitask. Yeah. I just want to feel alive. It's just what I do when I'm out. Right. I'm going to risk it and I'm going to put mine on this tray quite close together like this because it's less washing up then. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got to think of these things? Yeah, You know, if I use another tray, that's more trays to wash, isn't it? I'm just going to turn them all over so they're kind of like the round bits facing up. So I'm now going to put this in the oven. I'm going to put it on about, what should we say, around 200 degrees for 20 minutes and then I'm going to take it out. So I'm just about to put my chips in the air fryer and I've just got some little new potatoes or they're perfectly imperfect potatoes so they're not actually chip size because some of them are tiny so they've ended up as like little square potatoes. So what I'm going to do is spray a little bit of my rapeseed oil on them and then I'm just going to give them a shake and put a little bit of the salt and chilli seasoning. It's this one that you can get in home bargains, I've used it before and we really like it so i'm just going to sprinkle a small amount over them just to start them off and i'm going to put those in the air fryer they take about 25 minutes so this is what the cauliflower looks after i've had it in the oven about halfway through cooking I decided that it would be better to put it on a wire rack so that some of the um, batter could drip through and you're left with these really nice little crispy pieces of cauliflower. These have actually cooled down now because we didn't want to eat when they were ready. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to toss these in the frank sauce and then I'm going to put them back on this tray and put them in the oven. Our chips are in the air fryer and I'm just preparing, or Steve actually, is just preparing the vegetables to go with those. And then we decided to make some crispy kale as well because we're having, I suppose kind of, well, Frank's isn't Chinese, but the chips are. <laughs> I don't know, we decided to do some crispy kale. So all I'm gonna do is get some kale. I'm gonna spray it with some oil and then I'm gonna put some salt and pepper on it and pop that in the oven to make it all crispy. It's almost a little bit like Chinese seaweed. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is just put my cauliflower into a bowl and then mix it with my Frank sauce. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to cover it in some Frank sauce. I'm probably going to use about half a bottle, I would say. Maybe not quite, I don't know. So I'm just going to gently stir that round, try not to break up the cauliflower too much. Give it a little shake, make sure it's all coated. Meanwhile, I've got some onions and peppers cooking in my frying pan and this I'm going to add the cooked chips to this and some soy sauce and some of the chip seasoning and then it's going to be like Chinese salt and chilli chips. This is going back in the oven for about 25 minutes and I think the kale takes around 10 to 15 so I'm going to pop that in as well. Right so I'm just going to put my cauliflower wings back onto the tray. I think it will just cook nicer like this. I was going to do it in the air fryer like I said but sometimes it kind of 
because you have to shake things, it kind of mushes them up if you're not careful. And I'm not too sure how firm the cauliflower is going to stay. It looks really good though. <laughs> it does right, look, that's look true. looks impressive, doesn't it? Yeah. I can't wait to eat it. I hope so. Oh, I'm just going to spread it out a little bit. It doesn't stick, and then I'm going to pop this back in on around 200 degrees between 20 and 25 minutes. Okay, so our chips are done in the air fryer. So what I'm gonna do now is put them in the same pan as the peppers and onions. And I'm just gonna give them a little mix around. I'm gonna add a little bit of soy sauce. And then I'm gonna add my salt and pepper seasoning. A little bit, not too much. Probably about a tablespoon. No, not even a tablespoon. Maybe about a teaspoon. We've got the dark soy sauce. I'm just going to cover that in the chip seasoning. We want to put about a good tablespoon of it in this time. And just really let it all cook together. So I'm just going to let that cook. It's been in for about five minutes now, and you can see some of the potatoes are starting to go nice and crispy with the soy sauce. And it smells like a very odd combination, <laughs> but it does smell good. And our kale is out of the oven as well. This probably had around 10 minutes, I would say. Right, so here's our cauliflower wings out of the oven. They've gone really nice and crispy. And then we've got our salt and pepper chips, and we've got our kale. So I'm just going to dish it all up. Right, so here we are dished up. We've got our salt and pepper chili chips. We've got our crispy kale and our buffalo cauliflower wings and it looks really, really nice. I'm really looking forward to it. It smells amazing as well. And there we go, another completely 100% plant-based meal. So we've got our roast dinner on our Sunday. The boys have got some of the Tesco finest pork sausages. Steve and I have got some of the Tesco plant, is it plant food or plant, I can't remember what it's called, plant-based, plant range. Oh, and plant something <laughs> nut cutlets basically we've all got roast potatoes broccoli baby's got roasted carrots jake's got boiled carrots and he's also got roasted leeks oscar's got boiled carrots and broccoli steve's got broccoli leeks <laughs> and roasted carrots same with me and it looks really good and we we've got some gravy as well which is also plant-based so a nice Healthy roast dinner. I'm looking forward to trying the nut cutlets and the boys have got their sausages so they're happy with that and this is what's for our dinner on this Sunday night. So I'm just about to start tonight's dinner. I managed to get some of these Fry Family Food Co chicken style strips. So we're going to try these, see what they're like. Um, I'm going to do like a mushroom, garlic, chilli, pea and pasta pesto. I've also got some pine nuts. This is the Tesco free from green pesto and it's suitable for vegans and we've got the red pesto and the green but i'm going to use the green so basically i'm just going to put some chopped i'm also going to put an onion so i'm going to put chopped onion and mushroom chili garlic and the chicken pieces then i'm going to cook some pasta and at the end i'll mix through some peas and some pesto and we might have a little bit of even nutritional yeast or some plant-based cheese right so first off i'm just going to add my onion my pan. I've just sprayed a little bit of the Tesco rapeseed oil spray. I'm actually going to pop these chicken style pieces in as well. It says they take about eight minutes, so well, that's a long, <laughs> long bit. Oh, it's huge. Um, I think that's going to snap that one in half. And for that, I'm going to add my mushrooms. that cook for a little while before I put my garlic and chilli in. Now I'm just going to add a big teaspoon, a couple of teaspoons, I always say one and then I'm adding two, of 
garlic and also some frozen chilli. I get this in ice cream by the way, this, um, these are the chopped chilli, I get chopped garlic, chopped coriander, it's just really handy to have it in the freezer. Alright, so my pasta is nearly done, so I'm going to add probably about half, maybe less than half, actually. A couple of, about a third of a jar of the pesto. I'm also going to add some of the Tesco free from alternative soft cheese. Probably about a tablespoon of that. And a little bit of the water from the pasta that's cooking. Pesto smells nice. Mmm, that's really nice. How can you smell it smells nice? Because I can. It's boxed in. Right, so now I'm just going to mix my pasta in. And let it warm through a little. I just flung a bit at the camera. <laughs> you got to leave that bit in. <laughs> it ended up there. Oh dear. Right, so here we are all dished up and I've just put some fresh chilies or actually some jarred jalapenos on top, some nutritional yeast and some fresh basil. And it looks really, really good. Right, so here is our dinner for tonight. We've got salad. Um, so we've got some lettuce, tomato, cucumber, and what else have we got? We've got some chilies. We've then got some sweet potato that I've done in the air fryer. Some crispy kale that I've also done in the air fryer. And then we've got some of the fries, chicken pieces as well. And we've got some of this um, glazed sweet fig. I always rave about this, really, really good. And then I think Steve's put a little bit of nutritional yeast on the top of his. And just got a massive bowl of salad. And this is what we've got for our dinner tonight. And it looks really good. So I've just made some couscous salad. I've got a packet of the twisted couscous. I think this is the Moroccan fruit one. I've added in cucumber tomatoes, some iceberg lettuce, some red jalapenos and some chickpeas. And then I've just put on some mango dressing. I'll show you which one I've used. This is from Tesco, it's about 85p and it's really, really nice. It goes really well. I've also put some salt and pepper in there and I've put some extra uh, peri peri sauce on mine. Mine's got all the sauces. This is from Lidl. And then I'm just going to see what Steve wants to have on his. And there's also some yoghurt to add on top if we want. But just a nice cold salad too. So that's it for this week, guys. I've just realised you might be wondering. Obviously, it was Jake's birthday at the weekend. And that's why I'm sitting here hiding in the conservatory. It is so warm outside. Um, but it's too warm out there to film and it's too noisy in there. So I'm kind of in between. So we've got his banners behind me. So there will be a food haul this week. I do one every Thursday usually, but it may just be a couple of days late this week. Um, we've just got some things going on that I need to focus on. So our shopping haul would still be up, but it just might not be up on Thursday morning. But I know you guys all understand. And I want to say that if any of you did take the time to message me on Instagram after my dad was poorly on Sunday and he was taken to hospital, um, I appreciate you so much. I got hundreds and hundreds of messages. People are praying for him. People are lighting candles for him. Honestly, I just want to print out every message and let him read them. He would be absolutely over the moon to read all the messages of support and encouragement that you've sent him. So thank you all so much for that. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed, please go and do so. It does mean the world to me. Give it a thumbs up and I'll be back very soon with another video. Take care and stay safe everyone. This is what we waited for.